Hello and welcome to this week's beginner's guide. This week we'll be looking at empire quests and discussing the rewards that you get for completing each one. We will primarily be focusing on the doctrines that you get because they are extremely powerful and the game never really explicitly tells you that you've unlocked them. It's pretty easy to see that you get this reward, the secondary reward, but the primarily one primary reward is the the doctrine and the later game doctrines are quite powerful. This one I'm I'm a pretty big fan of increasing your health and and the damage output of all faction units can be really nice, but it's not great in all situations so you don't have a lot of faction units. This is a, a pretty useless doctrine. But I like I like looking at this stuff when I unlock them because if I have an extra doctrine slot they are quite powerful when compared to the other doctrines in the game. The first empire quest in the unity tree, the emissary, is quite an easy one to complete. Doing two quests for an NPC faction and uh, you know achieving peace with that faction is pretty easy to do. If you do two quests for a NPC faction then you'll generally go to peace if um, there's another NPC faction that you're doing quests for, it might take a little bit more effort than just doing two quests to complete uh, the objectives here. But overall, it shouldn't take you too long to accomplish that if you're playing peacefully. If you're trying to go for the um, military tree, the invader requires you to do slightly different things. So you kind of have to make a bit of a choice between going for the emissary or the invader first and this as it says down here is awarded to the first commander completing the quest so you might want to actually compare this 25 influence to um, this little reward which is an extra unit I'm a pretty big fan of, of faction units so I kinda like going for the the influence on the em emissary um, Empire Doctrine. I'm also a pretty big fan of the Doctrine itself. The, the, this increases how much influence you get when you complete a quest, which I think in the base game is usually like 20 influence, so you can make that 40 influence pretty massive in the early game. So I would recommend implementing this one if you can. Next Empire quest we're going to talk about is the Diplomat. It's also not too hard to complete. If you get a non-aggression pact with another player, all you need to do is, is keep that for 10 turns. That's pretty easy to do on the lower difficulty settings. If you're playing on the hardest settings, it might be kind of hard to get an AI to sign a non-aggression pact with you, but it can be done if you apply the right pressures in the, the right places. Just getting an extra 100 opinion, though, it's not amazing. It's it's a pretty bad use of a of a doctrine. Like I said uh, earlier, it the your your interactions with the AI are really dependent on the settings that you have, not on your opinion. Opinion is one of those things that I feel like they may change in the future because it doesn't seem terribly impactful on the game. It's it's like a factor in some decision making, but it's not the main factor or the, the biggest factor in pretty much any of the decisions. This little um, boost to your happiness is pretty good. It appears to be a permanent 50 happiness. Um, oh wait, no, it's not permanent. It doesn't keep you making 50 a turn. That would be ridiculous. It just gives you uh, 50 happiness to know all of your colonies, which means if you're getting close to a happiness event, it'll take you over the the threshold for it. So like right down here we're building towards 100 happiness. Once we crash that threshold we get another event. This would take this to what? 89? Yeah. If you added 50 happiness to this it wouldn't take this city to its extra happiness event. But this one it would go over 100 so it's it's kinda nice getting that extra boost to your to your happiness but eh, not that amazing. If you want to focus on trying to complete other quests, you probably should. The next Empire quest we're going to talk about, the Negotiator, is actually pretty pretty straightforward to unlock. 
you need to get to friendship level with an NPC faction and then buy five items from that faction, which is pretty costly. Let's see, this dude down here. Whoops. Now we want to talk to the dwelling itself, not not click on the, the place. If we go to our spacers here, we can see that each of these items is relatively cheap. We've got quite a few things actually reducing the cost of of um, buying items off of this faction, but it's still going to cost us more than a turn's worth of influence to buy things off of this. So it does take a while to actually build towards that um, that second condition, buying five items from a faction. But yeah, getting to this is not too tricky to do. You just need to spend enough influence on, on the secondary thing, and that should probably actually take you to the friendship pack level if you haven't unlocked that through quests. Buying items does give you a little bit of favor, which will take you closer to that friendship pack level. I am a pretty big fan of this. If you aren't past the 50% discount um, shop dwelling, actually reducing it by 20% is quite meaningful. That will allow you to get more faction units, which are quite uh, which are quite powerful when compared to the the racial units or even the secret tech units. Um, so just being able to get more of them out there is pretty useful. This basically allows you to turn like the 100 energy you have into more influence, allowing you to buy more stuff. The uh, reward is pretty nice, so if you can rush this to get the 50 influence and 50 energy, that will allow you to buy even more items off of a faction. You could even buy like a cheap 18 um, point unit uh, to get a little bit of extra influence. If you're the first one to get that, that'll give you 50 influence, which is a net gain. So, you know, keep that in mind if you're if you're getting close to completing this Empire quest. The next Empire quest we're going to look at, the patron, is pretty difficult to unlock. Buying three dwellings from an NPC faction takes a lot of influence and quite a bit of scouting because they're not going to spawn right next to each other you're gonna to have to scout in a bunch of different directions and then claim territory that's that's nearby each of the NPC factions if you don't you're not going to be able to actually incorporate them into your city so it's a pretty tricky condition to fulfill but if you can fulfill that then you're gonna get one of my favorite doctrines in the game I love faction units so uh, this is a very good doctrine for me. If you don't use faction units, then this is a garbage doctrine. It won't affect your other units at all, so you can ignore this if you if you don't like faction units. But, you know, if you're going down this tree, if you're getting things like the emissary and um, the negotiator, you're, you're being pretty friendly with the factions in general, so you should have quite a bit of guys that can benefit from that and even if you don't you get an army reward for being the first person to actually complete this which gives you quite a few faction units i think we can show them off over here yeah this is what i just got for completing this quest pretty good but yeah buying the three faction um dwellings is pretty expensive i thought maybe i could buy two of them and then conquer a third one to see if i could unlock it but conquering these guys was not good enough. I had to actually buy it using influence, and I assume that if you try to steal a, a dueling off of a player who has bought it, it doesn't fulfill the same criteria. So keep that in mind if you do want to pursue this doctrine. The next Empire quest we'll talk about is the Unifier, and I have to admit I'm not a big fan of the doctrine that you actually get out of this getting a little bit of extra morale and 200 reputation can be good in some situations but it's pretty easy to max out your reputation and, and not too difficult to max out your morale if you you play your cards right you can you can get that up to um, 800 pretty well not too easily but there are a lot of different ways to go about it and the objectives the criteria for getting to this are just they're they're pretty hard to fulfill. Making 
an alliance with two different players on the hardest settings is it's almost near impossible it can be done but this is more manageable if you're playing on lower settings where the ai is more likely to take an alliance and then you got to hold that for 20 whole turns so it's it's not even really realistic to try and accomplish this by mid game if you're meeting other players by turn like 20 or turn 10 to 20 then you're only going to have access to this around turn 40 which is okay i guess but by that point you're gonna have other things that can affect your reputation like you know just your history of actions how people see you based on how you've um, interacted with the other commanders this bonus is pretty good i mean if you can get it go for it it will allow you to buy some other things from the npc factions and maybe even buy some more units using that energy but yeah honestly not that great of a bonus here or here you can overlook this one and, and go for other empire quests the next empire quest we're going to talk about is the invader it's the first quest in the military tree and i'm a pretty big fan of actually using this doctrine it increases your morale against independent units that basically means anything that's not controlled by a commander and getting this early means that you're just gonna get more critical hits against those stacks and that means that you can take them on uh, just just without um, as much of a risk of your units dying if you're more likely to get a critical hit chance then you're more likely to do some extra damage and your guys are less likely to take damage which is not amazing it's not guaranteed to do anything good for you but 400 morale at the beginning of the game is a pretty big boost and um, yeah if you can invest in that I would say get that early on and then drop it for a different doctrine so that you can make the most out of your doctrine slots the unit reward is okay it's not that great but yeah if you're if you're fighting an npc faction you might need that it's pretty straightforward to declare war in an npc faction and then kill two armies belonging to them um, you can just clear them off of locations all around you or maybe they'll start sending things at you that you can fight down so yeah having an extra unit's okay but definitely not the best reward the next empire quest we're going to talk about is the warmonger which is an amazing little empire quest because having extra morale against extra players means that you can you can fight them a little bit earlier and rushing the ai when they have all of their armies out of position is a is a pretty good strategy waiting for them to come to you means you have to fight all of their armies when they want to fight you but going to them and, and using the warmonger is quite good so essentially the only thing you need to do to get this is to go to war with one other player and then just kill off six units pretty straightforward and if you got an empty doctrine slot this can make that war and other future wars a little bit easier i've had quite a bit of success actually using this um, i thought in the past that maybe that wouldn't be the great the best use of a doctrine slot but kind of like with the the invader this if you implement it early enough is a big enough boost to your morale that I'd say it's it's worthwhile investing in it and um, you know if you can get yourself an extra tier 2 unit that can be kind of nice too so you know you might as well go for that if you can the next Empire quest is the technologist which is pretty tricky to actually unlock applying five mods or applying mods to five separate units and using five tactical operations is pretty darn expensive applying the mods is going to cost a lot of cosmite and using five tactical operations will use a lot of energy so it's something that you can rush if you want to but it may be better investing in other aspects of your empire the rewards are definitely worth it i love this reward right here the extra tactical operation points and making tactical operations a little bit cheaper means that when you go into combat you have access to more spells and um, you don't have to worry about running out of energy quite as much if you 
you implement this. I know it costs 100 energy to get the doctrine up and running, but you'd be surprised how quickly you save um, you, energy from the tactical operations that you, you would be using. And, you know, it allows you to basically call in those strategic summons. Um, no, actually, tactical summons a little bit more, allowing you to keep your units alive. So it will it will not only save you um, energy on operations; it'll save you energy on on producing units and all kinds of little things. You want to produce as many units if you keep them alive using your tactical operations. I'm also a pretty big fan of this secondary reward. If you get there first, you get a hero item, which can be very very good. You know, maybe not so great probably quite good. It looks like the AI was able to do this in just 11 turns. That seems pretty early. The next Empire quest we're going to talk about is the Conqueror, which is actually pretty easy to fulfill the objectives or the criteria. If you buy three dwellings, that actually counts as conquering the dwellings. You can wage a war and walk right up to the the dwelling and just take it away from them or you can you can buy it with influence which means you actually have more options for completing the conqueror than uh was it the patron yeah the patron means you have to buy the dwellings you can't go around conquering them the conqueror actually can get away with buying them so you know you've got options when it comes to completing this if you want to go out and just attack them that's probably the most straightforward way of getting this if you can afford to actually take on their stacks I'd go for it but buying them peacefully means that you can you can um, you know buy items off of the faction versus just take advantage of the exploitation right now this can be an exploitation level 5 if you look at the bottom it says agricultural exploitation level 5 you can take advantage of that if you conquer them but not as much as if you work with the the NPC faction the doctrine itself is actually pretty awful making them have less morale making the enemies have less morale means they're more likely to fumble attack doing absolutely no damage but you can counteract that minus 200 pretty easily with your own uh, doctrines or mods to boost your morale so in the late game yeah this is pretty useless i wouldn't i wouldn't waste a whole doctrine slot on it getting a little army reward sounds pretty awesome definitely worth doing if you can do that so go for it if, if that's within um, you know what you think as a reasonable goal you'll you'll get some armies out of it and uh, I guess that's really the, the main advantage that you get out of this don't you don't really need to worry about that the next Empire quest we're gonna talk about is the Emperor which like the um, the Conqueror doesn't actually come with a very good doctrine um, but I really like the secondary reward so if you can be the first one to complete this quest you get a nice stack of racial units so you know it can be pretty um, game-changing or it can change the course of a war if you just get an extra stack of units near your capital pretty good pretty useful but these units won't have any benefits from like the sector exploitations which give you extra defensive or um, status effect resistance so they're going to be pretty low tier pretty expendable but you know having extra units can be useful just having some extra fodder in between you and the enemy this is actually pretty easy to complete to be honest defeating two other players by capturing their capitals or killing their commanders is something I've been able to do in quite a few of my campaigns without even going after this objective it just happened to be completed because somebody declared a war on me or I declared a war on them and I just happened to finish them off that's the way I like to to wage my wars it's it's all or nothing so yeah you can complete this pretty early on I would recommend you try and go for it first if not don't really worry about it because the doctrine isn't that great the next empire quest we're going to talk about is the builder which is the first empire quest in the development tree and probably my favorite empire quest to try and rush 
if you can complete it first you get a free colonist and that's that's a pretty big advantage getting an extra you know five production in any category you want is is going to give you a a pretty big head start in all the other players if somebody else gets it you're at a pretty big disadvantage all you need to complete it is to add a sector to your capital which you can do at four pomps then you need to exploit that sector which will take a turn or two and then after that you need to found a colony which requires that you have the frontier um, facilities research once you have that you can get a colonizer you can send it out doing that in less than nine turns is a pretty big challenge but if you can do that before the AI like I said earlier that's that's a pretty big advantage for your nation I do like this doctrine quite a bit it makes it pretty easy for you to um, improve your cities for later on in the game if you're building structures though you're not building units which means your short-term prospects are going to be a little bit lower than they could be so don't go too heavily on your colony structures if you're you're trying to build you know build but don't only build build some units or produce some units to go along with your buildings the next empire quest we're going to talk about is the operator which is one that i actually generally ignore trying to use a strategic operation a covert operation and a doctrine is not terribly hard to do but i'm not really a fan of covert operations and i could see this being a pretty useful uh, doctrine if i did reducing covert operations and strategic operations by 25 percent is is massive but um I just I just never ever use covert operations if you look here I only completed this basically for this video it's not my playstyle, but if it is yeah this could be pretty useful keep in mind though you're gonna be spending energy to save energy so it may not be the best use of a doctrine slot getting a little boost to energy could be kind of cool if you wanted to try and get this first it looks like it took the ai quite a few turns to actually get all three of these things as well so it's not terribly urgent but you know you could use it to try and get a tiny bit more energy here or there the next empire quest we're going to talk about the economist is probably one of my favorite empire quests to try and complete early so that i can get this doctrine applied to my cities as early as possible it doesn't take too long to research a resource improvement in the economy tree and then to build a sector specialization and to follow that up by upgrading that sector to level two after you've done that you can enact this which will give you plus 15 additional income on a resource that your your base structures and your colonies are building this one right here my main one has a research place which means we get an additional 15 research which is pretty massive in the early game if you put that if i put like a, a food building the benefit is definitely less significant but it's still noticeable and it's also quite good on places that have um, the energy building if you've got the energy building then you get a lot more energy which is useful for operations and building units energy has a lot of uses so being able to boost your energy income um, through that doctrine is quite powerful if you think about it it only takes a handful of turns to get the energy back that you spent on on implementing this yeah so 15 like what six or seven uh, turns just for one city to pay off the the initial cost of investing in this the energy investment that you put into the economist so yeah I think compared to a lot of different doctrines this one pays itself off incredibly quickly a lot quicker than other ones as well as providing a lot of additional bonuses on top of that if it simply just paid itself off in six turns that could be 
worth it by itself but you get a lot more on top of that especially if you have a wide empire if you have lots of cities this is amazing the energy reward pretty good i guess but yeah not terribly important if you can get to it before an ai i guess that's good but just getting this doctrine yeah it's good and you should probably try and get that as early as possible the next empire quest we're going to talk about the Spy Master is a pretty awesome Empire quest to complete. It does take quite a bit of effort using five different covert operations. It's going to take quite a bit of time and effort to actually complete, but once you get that, you have access to an amazing doctrine. Adding three operation strength and three defensive strength is pretty special. There aren't a lot of ways to actually increase your operation defense, so just having a three extra points is a massive advantage to your empire. It'll keep people from stealing your energy or your maps or any of those other nasty little covert offs, but it'll also, by having the um, extra three operation strength, it'll make it easier for you to steal energy or fabricate claims or do any of those little things that come with uh, being a little covert empire so i think yeah if you look up here the ai still hasn't completed it it's turn 80 and they still don't have that so you don't have to necessarily rush it if you want to get to the um the reward but you know getting a uh, a hero item is pretty pretty good so i could see rushing this being a pretty valid strategy for people who just want really good hero items. The final Empire quest we're going to talk about today, the Harbinger, is a pretty useful little Empire quest to complete if you're going for the Doomsday Victory. It will give you access to this nice doctrine which reduces the cost of building more Doomsday structures and the the operations that are associated with it. So if you just build one Doomsday structure and then launch an operation It'll make that whole process a lot easier. Um, but if you are maybe going for a, a what is it called, a last man standing victory, I could see just having this up and running, making that a lot easier. Some of the uh, doomsday secret texts are better than others. I'm a big fan of the Promethean one, which makes it so you know it's easier to basically shoot everybody and harder for them to shoot you back if they're not Promethean. Uh, but the synthesis one, not that useful. It wouldn't really help you accomplish any other goal than trying to win the, the Doomsday victory, I think. So yeah, if you want, you can approach this to try and get that, or maybe this happiness reward. I guess that's kind of good. I think that basically means every city that you have will get a happiness event, but like, I don't know. Compared to the other rewards, that seems pretty minor. Getting a happiness event is very random. It can give you food, production, energy, or research, maybe. Not research. I could be wrong about that. But, yeah. When you compare it to, like, an army reward, I, I take an army reward over that. All right. There we go. That's all 25 of the Empire quests that you can complete and all the doctrines that are associated with them. I really enjoyed talking about this. I think that this is one of the aspects of the game that um, new players miss and even veteran players struggle with understanding. And if you've got any ideas for future videos that I could cover, I'd love to cover things that my audience is suggesting. I know recently we had a viewer request that I revisit the sector development video I did earlier. I called it colonies and they want me to go into detail on the advantages and disadvantages with each of the um, the buildings associated with con colony exploitation or rather sector exploitation and uh, as much as I want to really dive into that one I think those details are so, are likely to change a lot over the the next few pa patches of the game and it might become invalid pretty quickly uh, as well as taking a lot of time and effort to really give a significant breakdown on um, but it's not that i don't want to do it i'm thinking about doing it and how i could maybe uh, 
make that work based on what I foresee as, as likely changes in the near future. So yeah, if you've got any other suggestions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'm definitely open to ideas. See you around for the next one.